Hey everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope that you are having a wonderful Monday or whatever day it might be if you're watching this on replay. On this uh, video tutorial, I'm gonna show you some fun things that you can do with all over patterned stencils. And then I'm gonna show you a couple things that I've done where I've layered. And it's, I mean, it's really fun and you can really achieve a great look. So as you're hopping on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to sprinkle and all that good stuff. All right, so let's see, where do I wanna start? Well, I, I pulled out some of my past projects um, just to show them to you. And you may have already seen that these um, videos before, but maybe you haven't. So. These were some cute little houses from Dollar Tree, little shelf sitters that I made, um, gosh, several months ago. This one has the white chalk paste with the polka dot stencil. This one has white chalk paste with the little doggy paw stencil. Let me show you what those look like. Um, here's the polka dot. It'll be, it's out of stock, but it'll be coming back uh, at some point this week. And here is the little doggy paw print. Love this. I made a t-shirt also with this and some ink. Here's another doggy paw print project that I made a while ago. And I used the white chalk paste as the background with the doggy paws, and then I used black and red chalk paste with the words home sweet home. And this was a Dollar Tree sign makeover. And it was hanging in my um, bathroom, or in my main floor powder room near, near our dog food until just this week when we started doing some painting there. Here's some more doggy paw print things that are kind of cute, and maybe you caught these videos um, I showed you how you can make this cute little garland. I'm trying to figure out how to hold it. Using the Magnolia Design Company wooden tags, uh, the the wood ones, and these are uh, these are super nice quality. Which reminds me that I should drop a link in just a second, and I will. Anyways, I used black chalk paste for these two. Um, and then this was another one. This was so cute, if you ask me. Um, where I used, these are the white tags that you can get from Magnolia Design Company. And I used the little doggy paws and the dog mama stencil set on this. And then we dolled up our little garland just using a Sharpie marker on these beads. This was really cute. I will probably find the link to that video and definitely put it in um, the comments. This was part of a two-piece thing that I did with, where um, it had the, the mini plaid and then it said blessing. Across. There was another piece. I just couldn't find it in my closet, chock full of crafts. And um, this was a project that I was just working on today and I think it turned out pretty cute. So this is just one of these $1 wood crosses that you can get at Dollar Tree. And I hung it on some wood beads so it could be a door hanger. Um, and then I used the wood stencil, which is this thing right here. Oh my gosh, I love this. I have another project that I'm working on right now uh, that's also a cross that I used this stencil for. Okay, let me remember before I get too far along to drop my, sorry, put my link here. You guys, I am so technically challenged. <laughs> Where is it? Here it is. Oh. 
I just want to make this super easy for you guys if you want to go look at any of these. There we go. I did it. Okay. Let's put you back over here. Okay. So, um, I showed you this one with the wood. And then a few weeks ago, we did these, um, we did these burlap flowers from Dollar, burlap leaves from Dollar Tree, where we put a bunch of different patterns on them. This was the polka dot. This was part of a stencil set um, that has these pieces in it. I can't remember what it's called. Let me show you. It has this in it. It has the stripes in it that I've used a ton. And then there's a zigzag pattern, which I guess I didn't get it out, but you get all three pieces. So it's a great deal. Um, and then here was a banner that I was fiddling around with where I just used black ink and the leopard stencil. And this is just a plain fabric banner. So let's do some projects. I'll just move this stuff out of the way for a moment. And um, what the first one I want to do is this one. This is a two-piece house set. From Dollar Tree these are such cute little sh shelf sitters and um, it has white chalk paste for the leopard and then gray chalk paste and this says autumn leaves and it has a little leaf there I'm gonna also go over it one more time with black chalk paste so it looks like a shadow but we'll start the process on this one um, with a stencil that says pumpkins please and there's a pumpkin it's all part of a five by seven stencil set that says autumn leaves and pumpkin please and um anyway so i'm going to show you how i did it so anytime that i'm working with wood like this or this pressed board or painted wood there's two things I always do. I always try to close down the, the fibers of the wood or the painted wood or the MDF or whatever this stuff is called. Um, and there's two ways that you can do it. You can either do it with a spray clear matte finish sealer. You can get this stuff everywhere. It's not expensive. Um, this is just what I have on hand right now. So I would spray it. Um, let it dry for five minutes. You've got to spray it outside and then it's ready to go. Or I would use a wax. And this is just beeswax. You can use, you know, waxes from the hardware store. Uh, honestly, I prefer to do this to spray seal it. Then after you have your first layer on, you want to spray it one more time. And what that does before you put your next layer on, what that does is it prevents your, your stencil from pulling up what you had on there before. So before I came live, I sprayed this again and I stenciled it and I sprayed this. And so let's do the pumpkins please. Oh my gosh, and then I have some fabric projects that you can layer the stencils on. Um, oh, and this darling pumpkin that I made out of those Jenga blocks. So stay with me because I have some good stuff to show you. All right, I am going to, these are the green stencils, and you guys probably remember that the green stencils are super sticky, and so they need to be fuzzed. And you can fuzz on your t-shirt, on a pair of jeans, or Magnolia actually has this fuzzing cloth that you can use. So I'm just gonna do it three times. And we'll put it on here. Let's do the little pumpkin. And I always write on the back of them what they are so I know which uh, side of the backing paper to put them back on. So I'm going to do, well, let's do one more. I'm going to do these stencils the same as the other one. I'm going to do a layer of gray. And then later this afternoon, I will do a, I will do a layer of black. So I was thinking that I would put the pumpkins, please, kind of winky wonky because that's the only way it's going to fit. Hey, and the noise is them working in my bathroom, which is right next door. It's getting painted. 
Maybe I need to put the pumpkin on first. Let's do that. And it can fall off the edge just a little bit. That's fine. So that's how I have it. And I'm just going to use some of this awesome gray, dark gray chalk paste. This stuff is so nice. Um, love it. And so I pushed my stencil down. I'm just taking the excess off and voila this is gonna be so cute when it has the black on top of it throw this off to the side in my little tub of water and now we're gonna do the pumpkins please sort of um, winky wonky or sideways or something so I can get it all on and you can see that these stencils are adhesive which makes them really nice to work with. It makes it so that they don't slip around and they're also reusable and you can reuse these like a zillion times. If zillion is an actual number, I don't know. Um, all you need to do is just get them cleaned up quickly just with some water, cool water in your sink. Um, when I'm doing a live or working on a bunch of things, I'll just have a little tub of water off to the side that I'll throw my stencils in face down just to soak in the water until I can get to the kitchen sink and spray them off. Um, anyway, so I was telling you about the, um, the layering idea. And when you are going to do a third layer, which I'm going to with the black uh, chalk paste over the very top, and I'll put my stencil sort of off to the side, then you do need to spray again in between. So I'll let this dry and then I will spray it. It's going to be so cute. And I'm going to put it in my kitchen. So it's hard to see right now uh, because that gray doesn't show up really great. Um, but I think this is just going to be darling. So, and it was a $1, um, a $1 thing from Dollar Tree. Okay, so let's set those over there. Um, the next thing I want to show you is this little cross that I'm working on. And we did, we did gilding two Sundays ago during Christ and Crafting on one of these little wood crosses from the Dollar Tree. And on, so on one side, I did the wood. And there's a really cool part in this stencil, I'll show you, that I strategically placed right in the center. It's this little funky part right here. Hang on. We're taking a, a message. Sorry. It's always something around here. Anyways, this is the spot I was telling you about. This is a great stencil. Um, and I've used it a lot. And it's still in great shape. So I did that in gray on this side. We're going to do it in... Let's see. I think the leopard, because I love that as well, on the back of this. And then I'm going to string it with some of these natural and gray beads and do a tassel on one end of it and use it in my kitchen with this little fall tablescape thing I'm doing. Okay. There's really no specific place to... this on so I'm basically just laying it over the top of my wood I sprayed it with the clear matte sealer before I came live so those fibers are closed down and what's gonna happen is they won't grab the chalk paste and spread it out and make it look fuzzy and like I'm a like I went outside of my lines so it'll look much nicer and I'm just going to when you're working with something like an all-over stencil, you want to look to see if you've covered everything, and then you want to move quickly. And don't keep going over and over and over it, especially with the bigger ones, because sometimes the stencil, the paste that you're using can almost dry out before you're finished. Dry in the stencil, 
and it's going to come out of your stencil but when you lift your stencil up your stencil may pull some of your paste up and you don't want that so I just did this I think you guys can see and we're gonna pull it off and it's super cute oh my gosh this is gonna be so cute for one dollar um, every time I go to Dollar Tree and they have that piece I grab like five more because I've used it for so many different projects. Whoops. Anyway, so it's going to be really, really cute. Okay. Um, this way. And let me show you the fabric things that I've made. And we're going to do one, which is going to be really cute. All right. Up there so it can dry. You can see that with the wood stuff, I've been sort of in a... A neutral and gray tone that's kind of been my theme but for the fabric stuff that I'm working on my theme is orange and black and this was is a little zipper pouch that I made I used the orange it's called pumpkin pie ink from Magnolia and I did pin a link at the bottom so you can go look at any of these stencils at the ink or chalk paste um, whenever you would like just click on that link right there um, so I used the leopard in orange and then I used this cute little stencil that says hashtag blessed I didn't put the hashtag on it but I used the black chalk black ink sorry to do that and I haven't ironed it yet but I will take it to my iron and I'll put either a piece of parchment paper, paper over it or a thin, uh, like one of the flower sack tea towels over the top. And I'll put my iron on um, cotton and I'll go over and over and over it for three or four, maybe five minutes. Being careful not to scorch my fabric, but that's what sets your, your ink when you're working with fabric so it could be washed. So I think that turned out super cute. I'm going to put it in my purse as soon as it's all good to go. This was a, a cute little, one of those little cinch top pouches that I think I got at Target for almost nothing. I got a, maybe five of them for $6 or something. And I did the same thing. What do you guys think about that? Pretty cute, huh? Love, hope, happy. And um, I just used a stencil and some black ink to do that. Okay, the project that we're going to do is this. This was a tea towel that I, um, it's actually called a bar towel and I purchased it at Target. It was in the dollar section and I think it was two or three dollars. It wasn't much, it's pretty nice quality. It's nice and thick and I just like the design of it. So I used the whole leopard stencil on the front in the orange pumpkin ink. And we're gonna add some decorations to in between these lines. Okay, and I think they have some really cute stencils that say, where are they? Here they are. You get these four. There's hope, which these are cute on a t-shirt. Love, family. Did I not flip my uh, camera? If things are backwards, I'm sorry about that. I intended to flip it. I don't know if I just didn't get that done or not. And then faith. And so I think I'm gonna do family on the center here. And um, this is all dry. You can heat set it before you do the next layer of ink if you want. But honestly, I have not really found that that was absolutely necessary. You do have to make sure that it's good, good and dry though. So this has been like a couple of days since I did the pumpkin ink on it. So I'm just gonna take my stencil off the backing. You can see it says family. And I'm not going to fuzz this green stencil on some fabric because this is fabric. So you don't have to fuzz when you're going to just be using it on fabric. It's sort of 
is the same thing. It's getting fuzzed while I'm using it on fabric. Okay. And I'm just laying it on there. This is a really cute set. So I did want to tell you guys, um, let's see what the comments are saying. I did want to tell you guys that when you, if you want to go look at any of these stencils or the ink or anything, but the stencils especially, that there's um, a little button that says filter and there's a little button that says category and you can switch from the different sizes. They have five by seven, eight by 11, 12 by 18, 15 by 15, and I think a few that are 18 by 18. So you have to flip to the size stencil that you want to look at. Alternatively, there's a search button and you can just put what you're guessing the name of the stencil is and it'll, it'll bring it up for you. Um, also, there's a category for new stencils and there's a category for seasonal stencils. So that's a good way to get where you wanna go. So we're gonna use this black ink from Magnolia. It's almost gone, oh my gosh, but I have some on the way. And I'm gonna try not to get it all over my fingers. Well, I've already done that, darn it. I don't wanna get it on my project. And that's what sometimes happens if, if you get a little bit of your medium on your fingers. So let me just take this off real quick. Okay, we're good. So I have a pretty generous blob of black ink on here. I pushed my stencil down good and Fabric is sort of like the wood thing where it will draw your medium in and spread it out if you go over it too many times, like keep going over it with your, your ink, or if you, um, if you put too much on. So I'm gonna try basically to just make one pass over most of the areas, being careful not to go outside of the lines. to take some of that excess off. And it's it's tempting to keep going over it because you want to make sure that you got it on there. But the better thing to do is whoops, I just got disconnected. I hope that I'm still with you. I think I am. Anyways, I'm just going to pull up a corner and take a little peek. And it looks perfect. Yay! So I'm gonna pull my stencil off. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so cute. Makes me wanna do a t-shirt with the orange pumpkin ink, pumpkin pie ink, and some leopards, and then do this word. Look how cute that is. So it'll take a couple of hours to dry, and then I will heat set it with a hot iron and we'll be good, good to go. Okay, let me show you the last um, thing that I was going to do that involves layered stencils and all over patterns. And then I want to give you a little preview of something that's going to be coming up. I'm so proud of myself. I figured out how to do something that was really hard for me to do. Um, so first of all, this cute little pumpkin right here was... One, two, three, four. Seven of the little Jenga blocks that I showed you guys yesterday, or the day before, I can't remember when that was, the day on Saturday, just hot glued together. Then I painted them with a creamy white colored paint. Then I used the polka dot stencil. And I wanna show you, I'm just gonna kinda of hold it to show you. Um, and I used that, that gray chalk paste. And then I just cut out a little piece of foam for the topper, for the stem, and put a little gray polka dot ribbon on there. Is that not the cutest thing ever? So, I wanted it to be one continuous pattern on the front, and to do that, I'm not actually using any medium, but I'm just gonna show you basically what, what I did. I just laid my stencil on the front, and then I sort of pushed it down over the sides 
and I started here, then I did this side, then I did the front, then I did this side, then, then I did the front of that and that side. And that's what I ended up with. And they aren't all perfect, perfectly round, but it, I think it turned out pretty darn cute. So I'm gonna put this with my little fall, um, just my little fall vignette that I'm working on in my kitchen. Okay, um, so the thing that I wanna show you, that I will be showing you, it will be one of our, um, one of our craft projects this week is how to make these tassels that have this funky top to them. Can you guys see it? It's a little hard to see. I think it's called a bordas, B-O-R-D-A-S, weave. So I did it with this. Um, this was just inexpensive rope. And then I strung some of these uh, wood beads on there. And if you want the link, my Amazon link to where I purchased my wood beads. They were pretty affordable and they're really nice and they have nice, generous size holes in the center, which make them easy to use. Anyway, so that here is that special top for this tassel. And then I did it with some creamy yarn also. And um, it it's really nice. It's really a brain, a brain stretch though, because you're gonna make four sections of your folded whatever you're using to make the tassel and then you sort of weave them all into each other and you pull 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 until you get this tight thing and then you pull all the pieces down together and make a tassel so i don't know maybe i'll do this tomorrow or the next day but it's really cool and um once you get the hang of it it's not hard at all so well, that is pretty much all I wanted to um, tell you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you want to look at any of the, the stencils I showed you, any of the ink or chalk paste. Um, oh, I did want to tell you that when you're working with these um, small like background stencils, uh, Magnolia has this new set of five. I don't know where my other, oh, they're in my box over here five paintbrush squeegees that all have different tops on them. They're in the accessories um, section of my website and you get five of them for like $10.99 and these are awesome. I use these all the time. I mean, this was the, the most brilliant thing that they came out with. I love these. So, anyways, there's a, I pinned a link at the bottom. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna hop off now and I'll answer all your questions I'll read all your comments and um, I don't know if I forgot something <laughs> I did it's a little crazy around here because we're having they finished up my kitchen the painting and they're working on the laundry room and this powder room right here so I always feel discombobulated when everything's you know everywhere uh, so I hope this wasn't too scrambled but anyways thank you for joining me and I'll see you guys later